Hi everyone, welcome to my poster presentation. My name is Yijin Lee and I'm a PhD student from the Department of Biostatistics at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor. And today I'm going to talk about my work on evaluating data integration tools on clustering spatial transcriptomics data. So a little bit of background. The advent of spatially resolved sequencing technologies has enabled the detection of spatially variable genes who have a distinct expression pattern uh, over two-dimensional space. However, the cell type clustering is typically done using highly variable genes, which does not use spatial information. So the motivation for this benchmark project is we want to adapt uh, existing match integration methods to integrate spatially variable genes and highly variable genes and see if we can improve uh, cell type clustering. So a typical spatial transcriptomics data set has two components, the spatial coordinates and the corresponding gene expression information. So using the gene expression matrix, we extracted the highly variable genes. And using the gene expression matrix as well as the spatial coordinates, we extracted the spatially variable genes. And then we integrated these two sets of features using the following integration methods. SCVI, which is a neural network-based method, MOFA Plus, which is matrix factorization-based, and uh, weighted nearest neighbor, which is implemented in Surat version 4, and similarity network fusion, both of which are network-based methods. Seamler, which is a kernel-based method, and then naive concatenation. So we use these integration methods to combine highly variable genes and spatially variable genes, and then we do dimension reduction and we end up with these reduced integrated features, which we then use to do clustering analysis and we evaluated the clustering performance based on the following uh, AMI, which stands for Adjusted Mutual Information. Uh, this is the metric that we use to evaluate the non-spatial accuracy of the clustering analysis. And for the spatial clustering uh, metric, we used a spatial variational norm, which denotes the which uh, we denote the distribution of the average pairwise spatial distances within each group ground truth cluster as P, and we denote the distribution of average pairwise spatial distances within each integration cluster as Q, and the spatial variation norm is 1 minus uh, 0.5 multiplied by the L1 error between the two distributions. We then have a F1 score. Uh, we performed differential expression analysis using both the ground truth and the integration clustering labels. And we compared the marker genes that were discovered. And using the number of true positives, false positives, and false negatives, we computed the F1 score. Okay, now let's look at the real data set results. So in this study, we looked at 19 different real data sets uh, spanning across four different spatial transcriptomics technologies, including Visium and spatial transcriptomics, which are non-single cell resolution data sets, and SeqFish Plus and MerFish, which are single cell resolution data sets. As you can see, based on this heat map right here, um, Surat uh, 4, version 4, which implements weighted nearest neighbors, um, tends to perform better for non-single cell resolution data sets, whereas SCVI uh, does better at uh, integrating single cell resolution data sets. And MOVA Plus tends to have a relatively more stable performance across different uh, sequencing technologies. It's also worth mentioning that naive concatenation also does pretty well here as well. So we also did a simulation study where we used the mouse olfactory bulb data set as reference, and we created simulated data sets while controlling for the strength of spatial expression and studied uh, the effect of the spatial expression strength. So using the real data set reference, 
we extracted highly variable genes, and then we selected spatially variable genes. Um, and these genes needed to have adjusted p-value of lower than 0.05, and their original spatial expression pattern also needed to match a certain round truth uh, group by more than 60%. And then we simulated uh, new spatial expression patterns for these selected genes by manipulating uh, the spatial probability value p. Uh, so the larger the p value is, the more expressed and obvious the spatial expression pattern would be for that gene. And looking at the results here, we can see that as the spatial probability p increased, all the methods were able to exhibit better performance with stronger spatial signals. And all the integration methods, except for uh, SNF, were able to increase clustering performance that were solely based on spatially variable genes, which speaks to our uh, hypothesis that the combination of spatially variable genes and highly variable genes uh, can do can improve, in, indeed improve the clustering performance. And that's the end of my presentation. Um, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please, uh, or comments, please feel free to stop by my poster room or shoot me a message in the Q&A section. Thank you.